Welcome back to the Eyes Report. Today we'll be covering the last five teams in Essendon, North Melbourne, Richmond, Gold Coast, and then finishing off with the GWS Giants. So let's get right into the Bombers preseason. Well, there's a fair bit of expectation uh, for Essendon fans coming into the 2024 season. Now on the injury front, they're looking pretty good. Jaden Hunter is the main one. A 21-year-old Ford has gone down with an ACL, so he'll be out for the season. And then their ruckman, Sam Draper, had injury issues last year and has this uh, kind of groin thing that he's trying to uh, work through. Uh, he should make it to round one, but it's still no guarantee at this point uh, in the preseason. But besides that, no other major concerns and a lot of the Essendon players are on the track, which is a great sign. Uh, in general notes, two of the big forwards, Harrison Jones, another big man with injuries, has been really impressive, according to teammate Kyle Langford. And Nate Caddy, who was picked 10, the Bombers traded up to get him, has been really impressive. 193 centimetre forward, who can also play in the midfield. It looks like he's training inside 50 so far. And with Jade Gresham in there, Langford also said that the Bombers forward line is looking pretty dynamic. Uh, they just need to build chemistry uh, with each other, but you throw in Peter right there. It's actually a pretty good looking uh, five or six players. Uh, so that's been really good. Uh, and then on the opposite side of the ground, Ben Mackay fitted in seamlessly, seamlessly uh, been really good. And Zach Reed, a forgotten man taken with Archie Perkins and Nick Cox. He's been uh, training alongside him. So it looks like those two will be starting at this point with Jordan Ridley. So who knows what that means for Jaden Laverde, uh, but Mackay and Zach Reed have been a very good partnership so far. And then we go to the veteran Todd Goldstein in the ruck, 35 years old, still as sharp as ever, moving well, gathering a lot of disposals around the ground in the mat sim. And uh, if Draper isn't ready, he will be the number one ruck. Uh, and you think if Draper is there, he will also play. Uh, so it'll be a pretty good uh, duo uh, in the ruck for Essendon uh, at this stage in the preseason. Quite a bit of off-field and injury news at North Melbourne. Uh, the main one at this stage is Taron Thomas is still away uh, from the club and there's still no timeline on when he'll come back and when he'll even meet uh, with the AFL. One of their recruits, Zach Fisher, also had a hamstring scare. He did go for scans and they have cleared him. So they'll just, uh, during this week, they'll just ease him back in. And he should be in full training uh, very soon, within a week or two. Tristan Zeri was looking like the number one ruck with no Todd Goldstein and really no other ruck support. Uh, but he's actually had to have a surgery on his face for what they've called a blow it in some match simulation training. Uh, so that's not a great uh, sign for him, uh, but he will continue running. He just can't get into the contact stuff. And there's still no timeline for that because they don't know how fast uh, his face will heal. Uh, Aiden Core, along with a lot of their uh, other defenders, is on a modified program coming back with Eddie Ford and Jackson Archer uh, also not in full training for various reasons. Uh, some good news, Braden George, 187 centimetre power forward. Uh, he's had uh, various issues with his knee, dislocated elbow was the latest thing. Uh, he's about to get fully released back into training and who knows if he'll uh, start the season, but it's good. I believe he was picked 26 a couple seasons ago. Uh, hopefully he can get a good run at either VFL or AFL level. On general notes, Cam Zerha was one David King pointed out for SEN that was impressive. Had what he called the Petrarca uh, preseason, where uh, lost a bit of weight, he reckons five to seven, seven kilograms. Uh, getting in better running shape to play maybe more midfield, so that's something uh, we could see in some of the practice matches. Uh, pick two and pick four, Colby McKercher and Zane Dersma, been really impressive, not just on the field with their play, but you know, the important things like professionalism and even some leadership qualities are on display uh, for those two guys. Ajay Simpkin and Luke McDonald will be co-captains again. I thought that might have changed after last year, but they've stuck uh, with those two guys. And in the leadership group, they've added uh, Nick Larkey as vice-captain, uh, Harry Sheasel's in there, Aiden Score and another youngster in Bailey Scott uh, make up the rest of that group. Uh, so there are a few injury scares and off-field things for North Melbourne. Uh, it is a very young group, but they seem to be managing the pre-season uh, relatively well at this stage. Moving over to Richmond, and we start at the top with two of their guns. Firstly, in Dustin Martin, who rolled his ankle last week. Uh, the club's come out and said it's fine, it's on the minor end, uh, so he'll be okay. And their spearhead, they're probably their most important player, Tom Lynch, 
uh, is still overcoming that foot issue that ruined his uh, 2023. Uh, some reports say he's progressing well and he's in line for round one and others are saying he's still uh, building up slowly. I don't think he's in full training or even close to it at this stage. So it's probably less than 50% of a chance that he's ready for round one, but maybe within the first month, uh, we'll see Tom Lynch. And the other Richmond player who should be ready for round one is Josh Gibkiss. Uh, he's had hamstring issues. They've really crippled his development uh, over the last kind of 12 to 18 months. Uh, he's training, he's in line to be back for round one. A really impressive defender. I believe in 2022 when we first saw him play, uh, so hopefully he'll be back. Uh, general notes, haven't heard much about Adam Muse's game plan uh, so far. I don't know if they're going to be playing that kind of uh, fast and chaotic style that we're used to from Richmond under Damien Hardwick, or whether the pacing will be a little slower and maybe trying to use some of their contested ball winners uh, like Hopper and Taranto. So that is still a bit unclear. Uh, Chris Newman is an assistant, he's joined Richmond, and Jack Zeeble as well is also, is also there in kind of a development and coaching role. Uh, Noah Bolt has been one who's, uh, if Tom Lynch isn't ready, he's been up forward. Uh, if Gibkiss can come back for round one, then it does give them opportunity to play around with their tools, and, and Bolt is probably the one because he has played forward in the past. Uh, so all seems to be tracking uh, well at Tigerland, pretty quiet. I'll be very intrigued to see what their kind of overall game style is, uh, but it looks like we're going to have to wait till uh, late February uh, to see them in some practice matches. Now we turn our focus to Damien Hardwick and the Gold Coast Suns, his new team. I haven't found anything about any major surgeries and no players seem to have gone down uh, at this stage in training, which is a good sign. Uh, ben King, Lockie Weller, Alex Davies and Jake Rogers as some of the players in the rehab group, it's unclear what their issues are, uh, but the, all of them have been doing running. Uh, so again, nothing uh, to be concerned about really. Uh, big raps on Hardwick by all the players now. It's probably obvious uh, that they were gonna come out in support of their new coach, uh, just for the excitement levels and to build a bit of hype. But every player has come out and said he's had a positive impact. They're training a lot differently. Uh, apparently it's a lot shorter, sharper, and far more uh, focused on the intensity than the duration of the training periods. And one of the key things that Damien Hardwick, according to some of his players, uh, that he wants is pressure on the ball. We saw that at Richmond, they were one of the best uh, inside 50 tackle teams, had a lot of good role players like Kane Lambert and these guys who would pressure and tackle uh, all game long. So that's been a focus for them as uh, is increasing their running power. Uh, ben Ainsworth is one who's kind of stood out a little bit. Uh, he's mainly played kind of a high half forward, a small forward role. Uh, he looks to be getting up the ground a little more. We know those type of plays were important in Richmond's team. Uh, those that can get up the ground to pressure again and then get back to kick goals. Uh, so we'll see if he can kind of emulate that role and see how effective he is. And then finally, uh, one of the players who was in pretty good form uh, to some of the reports was Mac Andrew. We saw him a lot last year. Uh, still pretty slim uh, right now, but if he can intercept well, uh, it'll be a, a pretty good boost uh, to the Gold Coast defense. He'll help out uh, Sam Collins and Charlie Ballard uh, as the two key backs. So uh, Mac Andrews is looking good at this stage. Finally, with the GWS Giants, I haven't found any injury news whatsoever, which you can only take as a positive. I can't find anything uh, on their current rehab groups, so and maybe they're just keeping things quiet. Uh, generally, very stable, one of the most stable clubs. Uh, the coaching has stayed all the same. I think all they poached was a former Richmond uh, analysis, uh, data analysis guy, uh, but nothing else has changed. So they'll get another full pre-season with a very similar squad and coaching group. So we'll see uh, how much effect that can have. Uh, Aaron Cadman, there was a bit of news. He signed a two year contract extension. Uh, no reports on how he's going in the pre-season. Uh, but, but you think they want to get some games into him, but it'll be a little difficult uh, with Hogan and Riccardi uh, ahead of him at this stage. And another addition was Cameron Mooney, not in the coaching panel as such, but as an advisory role for the tall forwards uh, and helping them with some marking. So maybe he can help Cadman, Riccardi, and even Hogan, who's a bit more of a veteran uh, in that space.